Hello everybody. In this video we're going to be taking a little more detailed look at polygon primitives. And like my previous video, I'm going to go to the shelf to the poly modeling tab and I'm going to create some polygon primitives. The first one I'll start with is a sphere. Remember that you can access your move tool from the toolbox on the left. I'm going to move the sphere over. I'll create a cube, a cylinder, a cone, a torus, a polygon plane, and finally, a polygon disk. And remember from the previous video that you can navigate in the 3D environment using the Alt key on your keyboard and the left, middle, and right mouse buttons. In the selection tool, I'm going to marquee select all of my polygon primitives, and then using my move tool, I'm going to move them back a little. And then I'm going to go to my platonic solids button, where we have some more options for creating polygon primitives. To access the other options with this button, I need to right click on it, and then I will get a drop down. Let's take a look at some of the other options within the platonic solids. I've got a pyramid, a prism, a pipe, a helix, a gear, and a soccer ball. Once again, I will marquee select all the objects in my scene. Notice I do not actually have to select my select tool. I can do this with the move tool as well. And now I'll move all my primitives further back. There's another place where we can access these polygon primitives by going to create polygon primitives. Notice that all those options that we just created are available here as well. This is another place where I can create polygon primitives. I'm going to make another torus. I'll move the torus off to the side a little. Remember that Maya will initially place objects at 0, 0, 0 in your world space. A third way to access the polygon creation menu is to press and hold down the space bar. A menu will pop up where once again you can navigate to create polygon primitives and select the polygon primitive that you want to create. In this case, a cylinder. And remember that if you want to focus on an object, you can select it and press the F key on your keyboard. And also, as a refresher from my first video, remember that you will access the tools for selecting and moving your objects on the left side, and on the right side you will find what is called the channel box, where you'll see the values of your object, the object that you currently have selected. Notice that when I move the object or rotate the object, its values in the channel box change accordingly. But there are actually a few other things that we can do to our polygon primitives in the channel box. Notice that if I go to Inputs Polysphere 1 and I click on it, I will get some more options. The radius property for my sphere is similar to scaling it. Notice that I can input the value or uh, my cursor becomes an arrow in the radius field, which I can uh, scrub to change. Or I can also select the word radius and then in my viewport, middle mouse drag. A few other properties that I can adjust are the subdivisions axis, which I can increase or decrease depending on the needs of my model. And I can also adjust the subdivision's height.
Again, don't forget that if you need to, you can manually input the values that you want. Again, remember that I'm simply selecting the objects I want to look at and pressing F on my keyboard to focus in on them, to center my camera on whatever I currently have selected. Something else I showed you in my first video was how to open up the Outliner, another way of looking at our scenes. Notice that in the Outliner I have a list of all the objects in my scene. If I select the objects in the Outliner, they are also selected in my viewport. I'm going to select my cylinder in the Outliner and then focus on it. And just like the sphere, I can go to my channel box under Inputs and I can adjust its properties. Each polygon primitive will have its own unique properties that can be adjusted. For instance, the cylinder has some common properties with the sphere, such as the subdivision axis and subdivision height. However, it also has some unique ones, such as the subdivision caps and the round cap property. To turn on that property, I typed 1 in the input field and then pressed enter. I'm not going to discuss every one of the polygon primitives here and all its different unique inputs. Rather, my recommendation is to create a lot of different polygon primitives, a lot of different types of polygon primitives, and then explore and experiment with its inputs which is exactly what you see me doing here. Everything that I show you in my classes or in my videos is really just a starting point, a place for you to start your explorations. So much of the process of learning how to 3D model is really just playing with the program, exploring it, trying out things. If you haven't already paused the video at this point to explore and experiment with these techniques, I recommend doing so. Now that I've explored a bunch of the different inputs of my various polygon primitives, I'm going to select most of them and delete and I'm going to leave just the polygon sphere. Remember that I can change its values in the channel box directly by just typing in the value that I desire, in this case 000, putting it back at the origin. What I want to show you is that in the channel box we've got this information available to us, uh, but also another tab, the attribute editor, can also be accessed here. The attribute editor will display the attributes of the object you currently have selected. Notice that there's a number of different tabs. If I select the P-Sphere 1 tab, I get the same translate, rotate, and scale information as we saw earlier in the channel box. And if I switch to one of these other tabs, the Polysphere 1 tab, I'll get the same information uh, or the same attributes that we saw in the channel box under the inputs. Whether you change these values in the channel box or the attribute editor really doesn't make any difference. Use whatever works best for you. I'm going to switch back to the channel box because I want to show you one more thing. Typing Control A will toggle on and off the attribute editor as well. Before concluding this video, I'm going to show you one problem that many students um, have when they first start exploring these tools and techniques. So I've created a torus and I'm going to adjust the inputs to change the form of this polygon primitive.
Now, if I want to duplicate this polygon primitive, what I can do is I can go to Edit, Duplicate. Notice that there's also a hotkey combination, Control-D. I'll move my duplicate over, and I will create one more duplicate by holding down Control-D. Notice that I can return to my original torus, and I can still adjust its inputs to change its form. However, the duplicates do not have that option. There is a way around this, but I will leave that to a future video. With just the Move, Rotate, and Scale tools from the toolbox, as well as the inputs in the channel box, you can actually do a lot. This simple scene was created using nothing more than the tools and techniques I've demonstrated so far. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.